Hi, I'm Jonathan from the Crankshaft Journal, and we just finished a bunch of work on the 78 Garelli Super Sport. We uh, gave it new brakes, new tires, did some work on the rear fender and the uh, taillight assembly, which had been hacked up pretty badly. I'm uh, going to save those last two for another day, though. Today, we're strictly talking brakes and tires. We're going to take a test ride and see how those parts, uh, see if they make a difference. I think they will. Please join us. One of the best things about riding mopeds is that they're full of surprises. They aren't necessarily as they seem. While they appear similar to bicycles and motorcycles in many ways and can serve as a nice bridge between the two in terms of performance, maintenance, and the skills needed to ride one, the actual riding experience is unique far removed from just pedaling a bike or twisting a motorcycle throttle. Mopeds will move you forward, and there's no mystery there. They're also a fun way to get around, but depending on the rider, the motorbike's sound, feel, and smell can also carry you back, way back in my case, 40 years to the summer before starting high school. Back then, a moped boom was afoot in my New Jersey town. Any 14-year-old could ride one legally, and it seemed like all of my friends were getting them as gifts for middle school graduation. But my parents didn't buy into that trend. They saw the bikes as too expensive and, of course, dangerous. Lucky for me, several people I knew let me ride their machines, so I was able to log miles on Cooks, Peugeots, and Moto Bicanes. Gorellis, however, were rare and exotic, and the only local kid who had one didn't like me so I couldn't get my hands on the supposed Ducati of mopeds. Flash forward to 2018, when a Gorelli Supersport XL, my most coveted model, showed up on Craigslist. I immediately headed toward the seller, a couple of towns away, and called him from the car. Soon I was on my way home with the moped in the back seat of my Subaru wagon. Finally, I was going to ride a Gorelli Supersport, a sleek, top tank designed with bodywork and a long seat that give it the look of a sport motorcycle, sort of. The more I rode the Gorelli, though, the clearer it became that its high performance image was largely a myth. It's about as fast as other mopeds, its engine wailing to hold 25 miles an hour and much happier loping at 15. It didn't matter, though, because if the Gorelli was any faster, it might start to feel like a motorcycle, which it certainly isn't. Riding a moped is much easier than a motorcycle, in part because it's so slow. It's also lighter and has a relaxed, almost lazy riding position, like sitting at your kitchen table. Yet, a moped is heavy and powerful enough to be a departure from a bicycle, and the fact that you don't have to work much to get it moving, well, what more could you ask? Again, that element of laziness, but sometimes you just want a nice slow cruise that's not too demanding so you can take in the scenery a little more easily and completely than on a motorcycle or a bike. A moped's perfect for that. And here's another difference. Unlike with motorcycles, you'll never look cool rolling up to a cafe on a moped. You won't get the fitness cred that comes with riding a bicycle either. Best you can hope for is an endearingly nerdy impression. That was enough when I was 14 and a girl who I liked agreed to go for ice cream after a tennis date at the park. I'll give you a ride, she said, kickstarting her Bianchi moped. Joy, I thought, locking my silver 12-speed to the nearest tree and climbing aboard. Hold on, she said. After straining a little, the blue Ciclomotore accelerated and the still, humid air of a July evening suddenly seemed almost cool. Before long, the Bianchi's two-stroke engine began to sing and I could smell its oil-spiked exhaust. Fireflies flashed in the dusk as we motored toward the uptown shopping district, home of our favorite soft serve. I peered over my pilot's shoulder, eyes watering but thrilled to make out the speedometer needle dancing past 25. Could we possibly make 30? There was a downhill stretch coming. The tiny engine was howling. The needle bounced higher. Were we really about to overtake the commuter train that ran next to the road? No, it was about to stop at a station. Still, we were flying. Round trip to the ice cream shop was two miles at most, but the ride seemed longer, more like a journey at that age. The girl and I never got any closer. Her family moved during the school year, beyond the range of bicycles and mopeds. But that lovely ride still ranks among a handful of purely fond memories from those fraught teenage years. How's that for transportation?